mainly focusing on on financial strategies, uh, winning financial strategies for, for SMMEs. We've got a different panel of uh, experts in the, in, the, in, in, in the field who will be touching on topics like accounting best practices, what's available in the market in terms of what are the budgeting uh, accounting processes, especially during the recession times. But also they'll be looking at uh, automated accounting best softwares to use. There's different softwares in the market. So they will advise us in terms of what could be the best ones to use and what could, could be the, the cheaper ones to use. We'll also focus on finance options and cash flow management for small enterprises, uh, looking at things like grants, loans, and overdraft for small enterprises. But also looking at uh, how purchase order financing. How do you finance a purchase order if it happens that you, you've got a PO, a purchase order, and you want to go and buy stock? How can you finance that so that you don't uh, lose on the, on, the, on the business? We'll also touch base on tax and compliance as well. Having how, how to have access to opportunities through compliance. What are the key compliance issues that you need to adhere to? in order to be able to, to win business for, for your company. And also uh, looking at uh, grants, loans, and overdraft, that will help you to, to, to know exactly where to find, where to apply for, for grants or where to apply for, for loans or overdraft in case you need to have cash flow uh, uh, that you need to, to solve in your, in your business. So without uh, wasting too much time, we only have two hours for this session. So we will dedicate more time onto our uh, speakers. I shall call upon the first uh, uh, speaker uh, by the name of Ms. Audrey Mulawudzi. Uh, she's a financial consultant and also a founder of Mulawudzi Training and Advisory uh, Service. Uh, Audrey, if you are ready, maybe you can put up your presentation and uh, present to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Louis. I hope you can all hear me. Okay, am I clear? Can you hear me? Yes, Audrey, you are loud and clear. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank everybody who's on the platform today, and I say thank you so much. It's an honor to be amongst other fellow small uh, business in, uh, owners. And I know the journey can be very difficult. So without wasting time, I'm going to share my screen. I hope, can you see my screen? Okay, let me just share Not it. Yet. Okay, let me share it. I'm gonna share it. Kidoki share. Can, can we see my screen or can you see? We're still not yes. seeing. Yes, I, we can see it now. If you can just put it into slide mode. Okay, let's just, uh, let's wait, 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 wait. Okay. Slide mode. Okay. But can you see something? What, what, what's happening on this? Because I can't see much. Yes, we can see your screen. Uh, I can okay. see learning outcomes. Yes. All right. Okay. I'm going to start with saying, um, as a small business owner, I understand exactly all the problems. And I'm, I got so excited when they were talking about budgeting in a recession, because when I started my business was, it was just before the pandemic in 2019. And I had to put all these principles into practice. So I'm very excited at this point because I've seen them, I've seen them work and I'm still here. So something is right. So I'm gonna share these with you and the, today's learning outcomes is I want us at the end of this program, I want us to have identified accounting software system suitable for your business needs. Because remember, it's not a one size fits all. Everybody's got different preferences. So we'll look at uh, the different ones that are there and then the importance. But all in all, they do the same thing, basically. Okay, and then we're going to look at creating a budget that meets your needs and the importance of a budget. And we're going to look at managing your cash. Cash, the major problem of many businesses, because think about it, when you are a business, 
owner and there's no cash in the business. Cash is like blood for a business. Basically, it's like if you don't have blood, you cannot live. The, your business will die if you don't have enough cash flowing through your business. We're going to look at how, uh, understanding how to source finance, grant, loans, overdraft. What is it that you're going to need to have so that you can be able to source funding? And then as Louis talked about uh, purchase order financing, we're going to also touch up on that. But on my site, I'm not going to go into details. It's just I'm just going to show you that how just a little bit about how that can be done. And then we're going to look at understanding the impact of non-compliance. I normally work with customers, small businesses mainly, and I always struggle with this non-compliance. Tax, people don't pay, they don't submit their returns, they don't submit CIPC returns. And, you know, non-compliance is the killer of so many businesses. And that one you must realize you i know a lot of people say compliance is expensive but yes non-compliance will cost you your entire business so if i have if you remember nothing and you remember just that that you need to comply that because for your business to survive compliance is the most important okay we go into the next slide where we looking at i i came up with one thing because this one i sort of said what is the most important thing if if i've seen for me before i even start budgeting before i even start managing my cash before i even start advertising what is the most important thing i always i said the top at the top there is trends what are trends your booms and your recessions if you are in business obviously you are either providing a service or you are selling a good a product so you need to get to a place where you say, okay, fine, you know what? Um, how is my business? Where is my booms and where are my slumps? You know, I, I've got the, the, the way where your booms are, where things are happening and your slumps where it's like, oh my God, I don't even feel like getting out of bed. Where, where, where are those areas in, 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 in your business? Because how is this important? Somebody says, how is this important? For me, for my business as a small business owner, I needed to understand that when do I make my most money? I normally take an example. I say, if ever you were in a business of selling, let's say, ice cream and it's winter, you would be saying right now that your business is bad because nobody's buying my ice cream because it's cold. So those are like, an example of a, 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 a recession for, for you, a slump. Ne? Every business has this. It doesn't matter what kind of a business. It has its own trend. How, where are my booms? Where are my recessions, basically? Where am I feeling happy? And when am I feeling really, really bad? It's normal. Don't think your business is doing badly. It's just normal. So now, how does that help you when you do a budget? I've looked at my business and I said, in my business, when I look at it, I actually have a seven month boom. After that, it's dry. It's normal. That's the type of business I'm in. So what I do is I say, okay, but when I do my budget, I say, what about my budget should I understand? The most important thing about budget, you need to understand that you're doing your expenses and your costs and your income. You need to understand what's going to happen. How are you going to be spending your money? You have to start budgeting. It's like a plan. You're planning. It's an estimate. Sometimes it's not necessarily that you got all that money. You know for sure you've got these contracts. But budgeting helps you know how much do I need to survive. So for my business, I'll sit down and I say, what is the 12 months vision? Because if you run a business and you are working from day to day to day, then basically you are running that hand to mouth kind of business and it will not survive. It is a tough way of doing it. I know people say we are hustling, but really that hustle somewhere, you have to start getting to a place where you really survive for real. You strive actually, you having a beautiful time. And I like to have a beautiful time. I don't want to struggle for life. So what I did is I take my budget. You have a budget and you say budget has to be over a period of 12 months. And then you have a monthly budget where you have, you say for 12, how much do I need a month? to survive. So you take that times 12, you have a budget for the whole year. Now this budget for the whole year is going to help you 
understand how you're going to use your funds. How are you going to use your funds? And one thing you have to also realize, your expenses are, you've got the fixed ones and you've got the variable ones, okay? So most people say to me, I had a friend who, and I said, you have to start budgeting. You must look at your income. He said, but I'm not having an income. I don't have a steady income. And I know that's the story for all small business owners. We don't know where the next money is coming from. So when somebody says budget, you, you like, man, but you don't understand. How do I budget when I don't even know what's going to come in? I say budget anyway. It's an estimate. It's a plan. So start having a plan in place and say, okay, fine. I'm going to need X amount. Let's say I'm going to take an, 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 an off the, the, I'm going to say I need 100,000 for my business to survive because 100,000 divided by, by uh, thingy. I'm, okay, let's say 120. We say I need 120,000 and uh, for the whole year. That's what I need. Therefore, I need uh, divided by 12, I need 10,000 every month for my business to survive. And I've given myself a salary, paid all my fixed costs and some of my variable costs. Now, what's the difference between fixed and variable costs? The fixed ones are those ones, whether you make it or you don't make it, when there's money, there's no money. Like those are the ones that in a recession, very, very important that you know. For you to survive, companies that survive recessions are those companies that actually have less fixed costs and more variable costs. Because think about it, fixed means whether I make money or I don't make money, I still have to pay this. Like example, your rent, you'll have to pay rent whether you like it or you don't like it. You have to pay it. Those ones, your insurance, you have to pay it whether you like it or you don't. Like it. So those ones in a recession, you need to understand that you, these ones you have to keep to a minimum. They must be very, you must keep them as low as possible. And then your variable costs are those ones that vary with sales. Like if you have more sales, you have more costs. You, you know, they vary with sales. So rather have the, those ones in a recession where you say, I don't hire people full time, but when I have projects, then I hire people, temporary employment, whatever, or, or, you know, other things like you only buy inventory or stock when you need it when you know okay i need it excuse me you don't just keep stock lying around without actually um having uh, people saying we need the demand so you you've got too much you you don't have the demand but you you've, you've got too much supply you don't do that you you only work with what you need when you need that will help you through a recession to survive. So budgeting is very important because you have to make sure that you know what you are going to be spending on and you know how much you are expecting to come in. Okay, and then we get to our cash flow management. This cash flow management is your inflows and your outflows. So now I always say to people, inflows and outflows have to be called, you have to control them. I work with customers, a lot of them tell me, oh, you know, I'm really struggling and I'm having a bad time. And I say, you know what, cash. So most of the time when somebody says they're going through a bad time, I say, okay, fine, give me your, 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 your records, let me see. And I go into their bank statement. The first thing I do, I look at how many transactions have they done. You find somebody has done 42 cash withdrawals. 42, I mean, there's how many days in a, in a month? If somebody has been going to the bank 42 times, and that is just withdrawals. And then you get to a point where you look and you find that, and then there were still some EFTs as well, transfers. Oh, the one they love, cash sent, cash sent, cash sent. And I think, okay, there was a situation where I had a client where I looked at how much they withdrew it was so much money and they couldn't account for it. And I knew immediately that there was no budget. Because if you have a budget, you would not be spending that much money just, Jay, because you would have a structure of what am I paying this month? And most of the small business 
owners, I know we love saying this. When you say, do you pay yourself a salary? They say, no, 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 I don't pay myself any salary. Then I know already immediately that, oh, there's going to be problems because I'm going to see those 42 cash withdrawals because this person, it means in their personal lives, they don't have a budget and therefore they spend whenever they have money. So, and that's the biggest killer. And remember, cash is king and cash is the blood for your business. Now, if you're busy draining your, your, your company of the blood that it needs so much, imagine what's gonna happen to your business. You are not going to survive. And then you're not even, you don't even have a budget. And I'm telling you, I look at 100%, maybe I'm exaggerating, 100% is too much, but let's say 99% of companies, small businesses, they don't care about the word budget. They don't look at a budget. Cash flow management, they do not manage their outflows. Outflows, not managed. Inflows, it's like, you know, we don't know how to even do that. I'm saying, okay, fine. How do I manage my inflows? Your inflows, you, you, I'm, I'm coming to the next um, point where is targeted advertising campaigns. I say to people, when you understand your trends and you know, when are you making your money? Like in my case, I said, I make money in only seven months, but those seven months, I must make sure they cover 12 months and make sure that I give myself a salary, a minimum that covers at least my personal expenses. But again, on my personal expenses, I have to at least have a budget on that side as well. And the most important ones, you're gonna be covering your fixed costs, your fixed expenses. So make sure that those are minimum. You don't necessarily have your rent and this and all the things that cannot even be paid for. And that's one thing I've noticed with a lot of companies when I look at their financials or when I do their financials, I realize that this is where they suffer the most. They spend without a budget and hence they don't even know, they can't track their, they, they cannot track their expenses. And then you get to the targeted marketing. Targeted uh, uh, advertising campaigns, you know how you can target so that you can actually manage your cash inflows. Know that, you know what, during certain periods, I know I can make more money. Let me make sure that my campaigns, I advertise, I make sure that people know that I'm out there and the right people, my correct clients, the right clients that I need to have, they know the ones that understand my pricing, the ones that, I mean, that is a, a topic on another day for us to actually help you with identifying your proper customers, knowing exactly who is your customer, because not everybody is your customer. But, and then, and then so you can at least manage where your money is coming from. And then at least you can make sure that during the time when you are, at your booms, you are really making a killing and you can store up enough, then we can talk about investing some of the money and whatever. But again, we're moving on to, I wanna come, I've like sort of talked about the budgeting and what is important, but think about it. We, you will have to learn and the cash management, but the most important thing that you are going to also have to need, because yeah, we, we're talking about smart uh, planning. We look at, we're gonna look at, software that can actually help you. Which are these softwares that can help you? We've got, nowadays we've got such uh, amazing software that is reasonably priced for small businesses. There's quite a number of them. We've got your Zero for small businesses. We've got QuickBooks Online. We've got Sage Cloud. You know, they can actually do your accounting and your payroll. So th these systems have actually made it easy for you. You can go onto the internet and start looking at what will work for you. And most of these companies, most of these software companies, they actually give you a trial, a free month, where you can actually start looking at what could suit me. Because somebody, I could say to somebody, no, you could go for this particular one and, and maybe it doesn't work for you. So you have to try them out and find that one that works for you. And once you've found what works for you, then you, you, you can stick to that which works for you. Okay, and then I'm going to actually start saying, okay, when we come to funding, when looking at this whole uh, success, uh, this trend that I, I want you to follow, where you're doing your budgeting, your, when already you get yourself into the habit of budgeting, you will, it will be easy for you to actually prove to funders that 
you have a business and how much it's perform how is it performing you will understand your, your 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 the finances of your business because most clients i realize for me they suffer with funding opportunities they say we cannot tap into these funding opportunities and i say it's because you cannot prove that you have a company and they say what do you mean i say because you, you're not preparing financial statements you do not know how much your operating costs are you do not even know why you want funding for what because people sometimes you ask them what should we be funding and when they tell you what they should be funding, you realize that it means they don't understand what funding are. Any any funder will find will need to know what are they going to be funding you for, and funding agencies are so there are so many funding agencies. You just go onto onto the internet and you'll find as many as possible. You can get a bank loan. You can get overdraft from the bank. Not a problem if you have a financial statement. But everything for you to have a financial statement, it starts from you starting with that budget because that budget will be showing us your income it will be showing us your expenses it will be showing us everything if you if, if you decide you want to buy assets or whatever you put it in your uh, your annual budget you already budget for it you just don't decide one day that you're gonna buy a computer no you you, you plan okay how much money will be coming in it as a business owner you cannot be running your business on like on instinct you know anytime you have to have a plan that's the biggest thing you need because then when your plan is not working when your budget when your budget is not correct because initially when you did your estimates you realized that no this one is not gonna work then you can actually correct it on a month to month and start projecting to 12 months just like that we also work on a month month to month month to month checking how is this am i basing your actual versus budgeted figures now these accounting softwares are so good in doing that they help you budget they help you track your expenses they help you with everything your banking they do your cash book actually they are your bookkeeper so now you already have a bookkeeper who's got everything and most of these software like I know I've got clients that are on accounting softwares. They can invite me onto their software, then I can come in. Most of them are cloud. So it's like easy, they, 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 they will invite me, I'll come in and I'll see all the transactions, how they are, I can help them pass journals. Basically we can correct, by the time when we do our financial statement, I understand your business, and you understand your business and we are on the same page you love you know where are your challenges and we can start focusing on challenges but not the entire business is a challenge only the finances then we know okay fine we need so much we need a loan for so much then we we can justify what is the loan for so when we go to funders we can prove to them that we have a business and this is how our business is running we've got a document called an annual financial statement that we could say, okay, this is how much we've used, this is the profit or the loss, and the loss was as a result of this. If we say we were going through COVID, it was tough, but this is how we performed. So you can prove to somebody. So you have to have a, a, a document that says, and this a financial statement, and your accounting software is the best best start point, because it's a literally, I call it a bookkeeper. You literally have a bookkeeper, and if you look at the prices in, in most of them, they are so reasonable. I mean, I say to, to people, I know some would cost you probably in the range of 3.5 a year, a year for the whole year, basically. Now I say, look at it this way. It's like you have a bookkeeper that you are paying 3.5 per year, which is how much. I, I think if you can get that bookkeeper, they would you would be the luckiest person. Because basically you, you, you're getting a bookkeeper that you are paying 291 or 92 rand per month. And I'm telling you, you will never get a bookkeeper for that much. But these accounting systems are literally there. They, they are a bookkeeper, making sure that you can invoice. I mean, when you come into procurement, you will understand how important it is to give an invoice that is correct. That is, that actually, um, complies with all the rules and regulations. So 
most of these accounting systems can give you exactly that. Okay, and then I'm going to look at uh, purchasing, purchasing, purchasing or um, purchase order financing. Now that one is, I think it's a godsend, especially for most businesses that don't have money, that cannot get grants, that cannot get loans, that cannot get overdrafts, where you don't have money. It helps you, it's a good start for a company to, to, to get funding. Once you have a contract with company A, and then you need, they send you a purchase order. They say, okay, fine. Could you please deliver the following services for us? And you realize that I'm going to need the following goods or services. I'm going to need the following things and they're going to cost me so much. You realize that, okay, you know, I think what I can do is I can take this to funding agencies. It could be, and there are so many, I can, I'm not even going to start question, asking, like telling you of one, there are just so many. You can go take your purchase order to the bank, to most funding agencies, your CFAS, your, you can go anywhere. And then they will actually give you the money to run that project because based on the purchase order. So I think I always look at the, the, the opportunities that are around and I say there are so many opportunities for anyone to, to succeed. It's up to you. If you are prepared to put in the work, you will survive. Okay, and I'm gonna touch up again. The last point that I'm gonna be looking at here is I'm gonna be looking at the impact of non-compliance to the future of your business. Non-compliance to the future of your business is major. When you're running a company, there's a lot, you have to comply with the rules and the regulations that firstly, some of them are industry specific. Depending if you are in the food industry, there are quite a number of rules that you need to comply with. You know, you may, you need to understand when you're giving your customers your food, it meets certain criteria. They don't end up with food poisoning and all those other things. So most of these regulations industry specific in the building industry there's industry specific that will tell you what is it that you should actually do and so if you don't follow those industry specific basically when they come and inspect and they find out that you're not complying obviously what's going to happen they would close your business so that one it doesn't matter how much budgeting you did how much money you have but if you don't comply with the rules and regulations that are governing your industry it means your business will close in my industry, I'm in the accounting field, so I'm registered with SICA. So SICA will, will, will require from my side to make sure that my skills are up to date. I have to submit a lot of CPD uh, points and I have to study, I have to sharpen my tool. Every industry has that. If you don't do that, then they have the right to come and say, you are not fit to do, to run this business. So they will close your business. So taxation laws. I have a lot of clients that struggle with tax issues that they have not paid. Major of that is VAT because most of the people don't understand that VAT is not your money. So it was never your money. So you need to pay it back on time. So I, I, sometimes you end up incurring so many costs because of penalties and what I like about uh, the laws in our country right now is the fact that they are so geared to us succeeding. They are geared to us succeeding. So it's up to you for you to say, what am I going to do to, to make this work? And then I'm going to take questions as well. And one of the things that I'm going to say to you is I can actually bombard you with a lot of information and give you so much information that at the end of it, you don't even know what to do with this information. And I know you're gonna be getting a lot of other speakers that are going to be speaking on a number of factors. So what I'm gonna do for you right now is, I'm gonna give you, I say, if you need any help, if you say, you know, Audrey, you were there, you were talking and a lot of things, I was tired, I came up, I came in late, I was, you know, Contact me on info at mtasa.co.za. And if ever there are any questions that you want me to address with you, got, get on that platform and actually start talking to me and see, let's see how we can help you. I think from my side, uh, uh, Dade Louis, 
I, I think I'm sort of done. I can take questions for now. I didn't want to keep it too long, but just. Thank you very much, uh, Audrey, for that uh, worth information. Uh, it was quite informative, your, your presentation, and we really uh, appreciate it. We do have some questions that Definitely. are on the Q&A. And okay. I will ask my colleague uh, Bokang to take us through those questions and then we can tackle them before we move on to the next speaker. Bokang, okay. over to you. Thanks, Brad Louis. Thank you very much. Um, let me just check my sound. I think I'm fine. Can you everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, no, great. Audrey, uh, thank you very much for a wonderful, wonderful uh, presentation. Honestly speaking, I personally struggle with most of the things that you said. Um, a testimony to what you just said. Uh, I spent about three years in business trying to get a new business and I couldn't. Why? Because my taxes were not fine. I even tried, you know, like um, tendering. I couldn't get any tenders. And I was always looking for private clients because at least they didn't want my finances uh, or rather my, my, my taxes. And I went after those guys, but they never gave me security in the sense that, you know, you get a client today, tomorrow they dump you, you know, unlike with, 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 with like um, a government contract sometimes, like, you know, you, you get for like three years or so, therefore you are able to do your service and actually even more so budget properly. Mm. But um, as I said, uh, thank you very much for, for the wonderful information that you shared with us. Uh, you dropped some genuine diamonds in there. Now I'm gonna ask you um, uh, a couple of questions that some of the, the, the audience uh, asked. I'm also gonna ask you some of my own personal questions because <laughs> I need help. So the first one is, um, Audrey, are your services free? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good you know, one, Audrey. Uh, you know, for the guy who said, Audrey, are your services free? I'm going to tell you, not necessarily. My services are not free. However, okay. because I'm so passionate about this field. I want our country to have as many small businesses as possible, create employment. I want us to be the top country. So for those guys who say, Audrey, are your services for free? I say info at mutasa.co.za. Let me help you. I, I trust what I have so much that I tell my clients, I say, if you can pay me, it means I'm not good enough. Because okay. I teach, okay. no, seriously, I believe in my principles because I always tell people the story that I didn't, I actually didn't become an accountant because I planned to become an accountant. We started a business and I didn't understand accounting. I didn't understand tax. So I became, I evolved. I I'll tell people, I evolved into this uh, qualification. I realized the importance because we started running our business. For, we've been running it for 22 years. I started mine during uh, 2019, June. And I said, if these principles work, I will test them again and again and again and again, because that is a science. I said to somebody, uh. Think about it this way. Um, if if I did the other one I did with my husband, and maybe one would say, ah, there was everything, there was this, there was that. I said, okay, fine. I want to try a small business like anybody else, like any small and try the if ever these principles that we have can work for you. If they can work and they are really working for me, and I stick to these principles. So for any business, I say, come, let me help you. If you can, okay. no, no, Audrey, I'm honestly speaking, and <laughs> I, I think you've answered this question like a pro in a sense that what you're saying is if you can't, then you might as well do it for free. Am I getting exactly. it right? If you can't help them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, <laughs> and that means you're gonna get them to make money, right? So, yes, okay, I, I want think your email is gonna be busy. <laughs> I think your email is gonna be very, very busy uh, uh, because a lot of people are gonna come for help because you, you're making a very stern value proposition to say that yes. if I can't help you, then what's the purpose? Yes. If I can't help you even budget, make money out of what you have, 
then what's the purpose, you know? And, and I like that a lot. Okay, <laughs> Audrey, uh, that's awesome. Let's move on to the, to the, to the next question by AJ. It says, I struggle with tax. I file on the CIPC every year, but I don't know how to go about with SARS. And this is from Facebook. Okay, SARS normally, uh, I, I always say, I'll tell you a story. So to make you feel much better, I'll tell you the story. I qualified as a CA, I, I mean, not, not a CA, they will beat me up. I'm an AGA, so Associate account, uh, General Accountant. I, I knew everything about the tax laws. I know the tax law, I know the whatever, but I didn't understand e-filing. So e-filing, <laughs> e I always tell people, if you struggle with e-filing, don't worry. We all struggle with e-filing. I've talked to other accountants who's like, oh, we struggle with e-filing. So e-filing is fine. But the nicest thing is you have on YouTube, you have a lot of guys who are trying to explain e-filing. I had to go on, on, on YouTube and learn about e-filing. And then, you know, I understood the law. I understood the, the text. I can write a whole text thesis, but not e-filing. So e-filing is sometimes an, an issue, but on YouTube, they've got a lot of recent ones that they will show you, not the SARS one. There are individuals who, who like a number of people on, on, on YouTube who will teach you how to file from basic to, but if you're struggling still, you've got my, my details. Let's talk, let That's me show you. Let me help you. I'm saying, let me help you, please. And I think what you said is very important because I, I like to urge every entrepreneur to also practice this a lot. Yeah. If you don't understand something, please Google it. It's amazing how much information you can oh. get on mm. YouTube. It's amazing. You can actually yeah. do a whole class on it. And, and, and trust me, they make it so good and so short that in 15 minutes, you get the point. Yeah. All right. You even know how to do it. But as Audrey said, if you're still struggling after watching a few YouTube videos about how to do your, 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 your e-filing, then yes, get in touch with her. She will make a plan. All right. Now, next to the next to the, to the next question. We have a question here, Facebook from Tato, um, Tato Sipkele. I need assistance on developing my business plan, manufacturing of protective equipment. What is PPE? All right, uh, manufacturing of medical protective equipment. I need assistance on developing my business plan. Can you help with business plans, Audrey? You know what? Personally, I don't do business plans, but I will definitely okay. help them. I can get somebody to help them. But, you know, I always say a business plan. Well, I needed to mm -hmm. understand. I like making things, you know, taking them to their smallest so that everybody can understand. A business plan is basically, what's your plan? What, 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 who, are you, who are you going for? Like, basically, what are your trends? That little thing that I showed you like your what's your trends who are you marketing to who what is it that you you're you bringing but we can help yeah. you with that but i know a lot of people think that's the problem i always say understanding what your operating costs are is the first thing that you need to understand then you'll understand that your business so your, your business plan is going to say in the next five years where do you think you will be but for you to know where you will be in the next five years you need to know where you are now so that's, those are the things we can help you with. It's not an issue. And I know CEDA is, it normally helps clients with that as well, a lot. CEDA does do business plans as well. But I always say okay. the most amazing business plan is the one that you will actually do because it's like you, you will affirm the fact that what is, what is my business all about? How much am, am I thinking I'm going to be making? Because I did one of those when I started they make you think about what, who's going to be my client. Who, how much will this client be able to afford? So if I say my growth in the next month, in the next year, in the next five years, how is how does it look like? Basically, that's what a business plan is. No more about your business. It's not shouldn't okay. be a document that somebody just makes for you and then you walk away and then you can't even present it to your potential funders. 
you need I can to actually take agree with you on that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I say own for me, my idea is own your business, own it, know the ins and outs about your business. That's and become no. a walking, breathing business plan. <laughs> No, thank you very much on that point. And, and you're absolutely right in terms of, you know, your business plan being absolutely from yourself. Mm. But I think a lot of people, you know, get challenged. They get a challenge when it comes to, you know, expressing themselves in writing. You know, yeah. I, I, had a, I had a challenge with that. Like how I know what is it that I need to do. I know how I plan to do it. Yeah. But then I can't put it down in a manner that somebody that's reading my plan can actually get the full picture without me having to be there and explain it in words. Because the best way I know how to do it is via words. But some people have a struggle. What, what would you say to those people that have you know, a struggle with words? I will tell them that, you know, that is why me and you are one. I struggle with words every day. I always tell them, jokingly, I say for me, Bantu education was a real thing. So normally what I do is that I say, as long as you know what it is, and then you get somebody to do your business plan, but you still need to own your business plan. So I know okay. Siri can help you with that as well. I know for sure they could definitely. But at least no, know, but it. Yeah. know what it's, what's in your business plan. I hope, 100%. That, I hope that answers title. It, it, it does. And, and also, uh, I mean, when it comes to the financial projections, I would also imagine that they're simple enough, right? They are. But think about it. Once you know we, you've started your budgeting process, it's basically that. It's you okay. estimating and, and saying, I'm projecting it to the next five years, looking at the conditions of life, but you don't have to be that much of a guru to understand it. The, the people who prepare business plans will be able to do, but at least you should tell them your, your figures. Mm -hmm. You should understand at least, what do you think? We, we normally, sure. I work with a lady who we normally with Akili. So normally we, 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 we help with business plans. And, but you, ours, we say, we, we don't want one. We want a bankable one. We want you to be able... You see, funders also fund the entrepreneur because they see if this person has this much energy, they will be able to handle their business. So we, we give you one that you can own, basically. No, 100%, 100%. Okay, now let's move on to the next question. All right, I think is, um, um, uh, okay, what happens when you provide training on learnership? but your company hasn't registered for UIF and you pay full stipend to your learners without UIF, all right? That's just, I'm, I'm just closing my eyes and saying non-compliance, non-compliance, <laughs> basically that's non-compliance. I've had, okay. when I started early days, I had, you know, companies that, You'd see this company has been in business for 14 years. They look good in the outside. But when you find out, you find that they haven't registered their people for UIF. And for me, it's a touching subject. I say, you are, what happens, especially what happened during the pandemic. Imagine a lot of people were without jobs, but they couldn't mm -hmm. even pay. UIF is protection for your employees. If you care for them enough, you protect them. So for me, um, I feel that is a non-compliance outright, you know, outright. <laughs> I don't know no. if I need to say more. It's, 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 it's non-compliance. You need to be registered for UIF, finish. And 100%, and, and I will actually reaffirm that myself and say, please guys, compliance is very important. It actually opens up doors of opportunity. You know, in this case, going against the law when it comes to your own business is not a safe bet. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're fully compliant and you go to the tenders that are actually happening in South Africa right now, you'll notice something. Actually, do an exercise for me right now. Mm -hmm. Look into your own field 
look at how many tenders currently are there in South Africa. Hmm. Now, you'd imagine that there's so many companies and so many people are actually, you know, winning these tenders or they're going to, you know, chosen people. But I'll tell you this much, even those chosen people, they're finding it very difficult, especially the chosen one, because they don't do their taxes very well. So that gives a loophole for you to actually be ahead because you comply. All right. So get your compliance in order and get yourself ahead of the pack. You'll check that if you look at how many the tenders that are there right now, you'll see that there's plenty you need not to you know go hungry all right then now for this one is for bralui bralui i hope you are there um it says hi we have just started an aluminium company in july 2021 do you fund businesses who just started for equipment uh who is active and need funding funding this is from karen Borda, and this is for you bralui bralui can you take on this one do you uh, uh do funding for such a company the karen has started a company uh in 2021 they do aluminium thank you very much uh Bukang, for for, the, for that question karen firstly I, I would like you to identify a closest uh, CEDAR branch uh, to you so that uh, they can be able to assist you. They will re firstly register you as a client and then be in a position to assist you. But with regards to funding specifically, CEDAR offers non-financial support services to SMMEs. However, we do facilitate the process of SMMEs getting uh, funded uh, for, for, for their projects. But the first thing is that the SMMEs need to go to the local, to the nearest local branch and be registered as, as a client. We also have uh, incubators as well uh, that you can also go into and you can also get a, a funding for, for, for your business. We also have a program called the Technology Transfer Fund uh, within CEDA, which is a, a program uh, that is looking into assisting SMMEs with funding specifically for equipment. Uh, they will not give you hard cash, but they can buy the necessary equipment that your business requires. So the first thing is to is to register as a as a CEDA client at any local or nearest branch. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pro Louis, for that. Uh, Karen, I hope that answers you. And yet again, I will state it again, compliance. Even when you do register, get your things in order. It's very easy to get financing um, uh, uh, for your projects, especially when you comply. Um, but I hope, Karen, that answers you. Now we have the next question from Dabuko Majola. He says, um, Audrey, do you undertake reviews of financial statements? Yes. Okay. I so I would <laughs> continue. You, you're saying, Audrey? No, that one, yes, we do. If that's all they wanted to know. A review. <laughs> all right, review no problem. Is, yeah, it's like, um, you know, normally, you've got you compile uh, financial mm -hmm. statements you can compile them for remember we talk about public interest uh when you have a big very big company that has more than 100 employees then the public interest score is high it means it's 100 right okay but then if you, you if you have a company that's making 20 million and has 20 past uh, 20 uh, employees and 20 whatever, that one is still not 100. You get, I, I just wanted to let you know why the public interest score, just the difference. You can, you can have 100 people already, mm -hmm. your 100 employees, company in, uh, public interest is above 100. So basically, if, if you're doing anything above with a high uh, public interest score, then in that case, it will be audited. Audit okay. means we compile, we compile your financial statement and then we audit them, ne? because the public interest score is above. 
a certain amount, 351. And then we have where we have we compile the financial statements and then we have to review them because of again the public score interest score is high so that's where reviews come in but you cannot compile and review so it's like i'm the coach and the player so no no the the, the empire and the play basically you can rest yourself kind of situation yes so yes. So, so if i compile then I cannot review. But if somebody compiles it, I can review it. It's basically, it's like looking to check if everything is in order. It's just, okay. it, it, yeah. No, 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 but that, that, that is quite clear because you, you are saying that you can review, but obviously there's different levels of reviewing. There's one that's above uh, the interest, the public interest also. Yes. Yes, and one below. Okay, I think that one is clear. So the simplest answer is yes, you do reviews. Now, the <laughs> next two quick questions, and I think I'm going to take this first one. It says, are the softwares free? Do we pay? Now, you had previously answered this in your, in, in, in your, in your presentation where you said you can have trials on your zeros, on your uh, 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 QuickBooks, including Sage, where you yeah. try out these software programs, but majority of them are not free. You do get free ones, but some of those free ones are unknown and, and may not give you the full functionality that you may need. Now, if because I use some of these softwares, so from a person who doesn't understand you know, finances to that high degree like Audrey, quick word of advice, softwares that are renowned like Sage, Zero, or QuickBooks, they can easily integrate within your banking, all right? So meaning after that, your transactions, as you make them, this software takes your transactions and records them accordingly and actually allocates them. So you can set pre-identifiers that says, if I swipe my card at a petrol station, that's for fuel yes. and transportation. If I swipe my card at a restaurant, that is for entertainment and so forth. Yeah. So, so these are the things that you can do with these softwares. Now, guys, on that part alone, she mentioned that these softwares, Audrey, that is when I say she, she mentioned that these softwares are roughly around 300 rands. She says 290 something, if yeah. I recall correctly. So around 300 rands for the software and you are saving 30,000 rands maybe or 15, 10 from an actual bookkeeper that you could be, you know, having on board on your own company that you could probably be, be having on your budget. So she's actually saying, no, as a practitioner herself, she's not saying put her on the books, use these softwares. But then when you do get stuck, you can then come to her and then she'll help you get unstuck. All right. Including some of the basic understanding of these softwares or finances in general, you can always get there. Now, question two, what is the best free uh, uh, accounting software for SMMEs. Now, as I said, some of the free ones are a little bit problematic, but I do not know some of the free ones. Do you know some of the free ones there, um, uh, uh, Audrey? You know, I, I'm, I'm, I believe in this. Invest in your company. Do not go free. You rather go Excel. Do your own Excel thing if you go in free, because People, I get to a place where they, you're going to grow. I, I, I mean, I have this faith. You will grow. As a company, you will grow. You'll start tapping into bigger companies. If you go free, you get used to it. I get companies that have been in business for 14 years and they don't have proper, and they've got problems. So I'm thinking, I'm not going to teach you things that are going to set you back. People, get. Okay. Get systems that work. Invest in your business. In your first two years, I have, this is the, the, the principle. In the first two years of your business, invest 80% of the money that you get 
back into your business. And that is you getting yourself a system that works. And most of these ones that are free, I don't even want to know because then you will have to, to be fixing once your business is growing. I say prepare yourself for greatness. Clar. That that's my <laughs> prepare yourself for like greatness. <laughs> and if no. not, if not, use Excel. Just plain Excel spreadsheets. Then we'll help you. I'll teach you how to do that. I love it. it simple. Like, and I'm not a techno buff. I, I I am afraid of the computer. If so, if I say let's go Excel, then rather. I mean. Okay. I think that is quite clear, and 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 I would actually even say so myself that sometimes free things. You're absolutely right. They they're not the way to go, especially over things that you should be investing in, such as you know our computer software. And we just said, you know, it's 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 you're talking about three hundred rands a month. I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot or less, but I know it's a lot for many, but for many, it's also not a lot, especially if you're a passionate business person that really wants to succeed. You can make a plan, all right? 300 rands or less is not a lot of money. So yes, free, we all like free, but free comes as well at the price. Trust me, there is no company out there developing something for free. Mm -hmm. There is a price that you end up paying, all right? So also remember that. So you ask yourself, do you want to pay that price with your finances? That's a tough one. But anyway, moving on to the next uh, uh, question. Okay, so we are getting a lot of SARS-related questions. Um, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> so, 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 so because we are getting a lot of SARS-related questions, I'm going to let uh, the lady from SARS as well come in and actually speak, you know, so that at least uh, these as well we can answer. Audrey, please, please, please don't go away because we are going to come back to you after this when it's all done. So now uh, you'll also be, be speaking as well um, uh, um, uh, afterwards. So joining us is going to be uh, Miss Yolanda, uh, Yolanda Schole. Um, um, so just hold on for a minute. I just want to see if we can get Yolanda on. Hi, Yolanda, are you there? Yolanda, um, I think your mic is muted. Sorry there about that. No <laughs> Good problem. morning, everyone. Good morning, and, Yolanda. Yes, and, I'm and here, and I hope Patience is also here with me this morning. Patience, are you there? Okay, yes, I not... am. Oh, okay, great stuff, Patience. Good morning. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, Yolanda, do, do you mind, Yolanda, if you can just drop the camera a little bit because we just see in your forehead. It's kind of uh, funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. there you go. There you go. Looking amazing. All right, then I'll leave to the both of you, Yolanda and Sis Patience. So please go ahead. Patience, are you going to start? No, Yolanda, you can go ahead, ma'am. I'll be after you. I'll go after you. Uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you for having us on this session this morning. Uh, we're going to be talking about SAS e-filing as a platform where you can be compliant with SAS, of course, in terms of your taxes and, and everything else. So SAS e-filing is an online platform uh, to help you as taxpayers to be able to be efficient in terms of how you submit your tax returns and how you do your payments as well, uh, so that you are compliant for your businesses and also uh, to ensure that everything is effective. It's a 24 hours online at your convenience. So you can do it uh, at your convenience uh, in your home. So we are in the middle of the 
personal income tax filing season. It started on the 1st of July, it will end end of October. So what I wanted to talk about this morning is the, um, the things that we can expect in the market in terms of the filing season. So for now, the changes in terms of the filing season will be taxpayers should be able to get automatic assessment. And then if you do get that automatic assessment, that means you don't have to do anything. You have within 40 days if you do not agree with the assessment that has, has been raised. So you can dispute that. Okay, so once that 40 day period has been passed, then you know that you can't do anything about it. And uh, that period is, will be closed for you. So after assess an assessment has been raised, uh, that means you only have about 40 days. An assessment is when SAS looks at all your income, either like, you know, in terms of personal, uh, and then they automatically do your return for you. Then it gets filed for you. And then once it's, it's filed, then you have within the 40 days to dispute. And if you don't agree with it, or you can revise the return as well. The other thing that is good in terms of the tax system now as well with SAS when they celebrate in that 25 years is that if you are using a passport number now, you have an opportunity to the information to pre-populate on the system when before that process was not available. Okay, so you have an option to refresh on your e-filing profile if you are a registered user. You have an e, okay, if you are not a, an e-filing registered user and your information has not been updated with SARS, you can use your phone actually to do the registration Mobi app. It can do an automatic registration when you complete the information and update the information on the SAS system to make your life easier. But if you get a rejection when you're doing the registration as a first time user for e-filing, then what you will need to do is to book an appointment so that a consultant can update your information. And once your information has been updated, then you will be able to, to find better processes with SAS. There was an earlier question uh, when I was listening in terms of e-filing the processes to say it's not as friendly, but it is. The key role for e-filing and the processes to work effectively for you as a taxpayer or as a user is to be mindful in terms of using it's a gadget, you know. And then with the gadget, what are the principles that apply to that specific uh, gadget or the application? So for SAG, the, principle, the basic principle, if you're gonna enjoy e-filing as a platform is to ensure that your information as a business initially has been updated. You update your information for the first time. As an individual, you update your information as well because together they work hand in hand moving forward. So if all that information is updated initially with SARS, then you will enjoy e-filing as a platform. You will be able to refresh for compliance where you do the tax clearances on e-filing, where you do your returns without having to go to the branch. Anything that you have any difficulty with, the call center is also there. We have also our online services on the website where you are able to read through to see like, you know, what are you struggling with? But the key point, if you're gonna use e-filing as a platform is to ensure that initially your information as a business is updated as a public officer, a person responsible for that business, your information is updated. As an individual, your information is updated and you will enjoy all the SAS processes because we as support in this business, we're here at your service. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yolanda. Uh, what happened? Are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Thank you. Are you still continuing or are you done with your presentation? Oh, I am done with my presentation. Thank oh, you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think that was uh, a lot of good information, especially when it comes to tax matters, uh, e filing, because it's okay. always a scary topic. You know, uh, when you talk SARS and tax and 
all those uh, issues. Uh, let's give an opportunity yeah. now to to patients. Uh, patients, uh, are you ready to do your presentation so that we we'll wrap uh, this part? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. Thank you, program director. Thank you to my colleague uh, Yolanda for that um, information on e-filing. I had uh, that the taxpayers are, or SMMEs are struggling with e-filing, but it, it really doesn't bite. And Yolanda is there to support you. I'm sure at the end, she will share an email that will um, make things easy. We are here to make things easy. I just need to emphasize that, not to frustrate taxpayers. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I just want to introduce 10 over tax to, to our taxpayers. Uh, let me just try to project and see if I'll win. Okay, uh, can just somebody tell me if my screen is visible now? Not yet. Okay, it might be technology. Uh, share. It's coming. Then. Yes. Okay. If you are able to put it into slide mode, that would be hard. Okay. Okay. Uh, like I've been introduced, my name is Patience Khadebe. I work in the SMME department. Our role is to advocate for SMMEs, try to simplify processes, try to make sure that the legislation favors SMMEs, we get insights, we, and we, we, we attend sessions like this to educate, um, we create services that are talking to SMMEs and are answering the, um, the frustrations that SMMEs are here. So I'm very happy to be here to hear from like different angles what uh, SMM is struggling with. But I also believe knowledge is power. Sometimes there are things out there and products that can make the life of an SMME easier, but the SMMEs are not away. As such, we are sometimes sitting with the information or it is on the website and nobody is notified or even cares to know there is a turnover tax out there. Okay, what is turnover tax for an SMME? Turnover tax, it's a simplified tax that takes your VAT into consideration um, income tax. So if we look at income tax now, today, if you are a company, you pay 28%. But if you register for turnover tax, you get a different rate. So basically, there is no reason for the SMMEs to be non-compliant if they understand the products that are in the market. So we have turnover tax that um, replaces a number of taxes. And from 1 March 2012, if you are registered for turnover tax, you can choose as an uh, SMME that I also want to register for VET additionally. So VET becomes optional. What are the benefits of turnover tax? Um, it's, it, it, it doesn't, uh, we don't tax you on profit, which is income, less expenses. We tax you on the turnover. So if we tax you on the turnover, you do not have to have the, you do not have to keep the extreme records. So it is for people that are struggling with keeping up records and who is it for? So as a business, when you start, we, we take you like a child. You have to go through certain steps before you become stable. So for the businesses that have a turnover that is below 1 million, they can opt for turnover tax and just be taxed on um, the turnover, which will be just on the bank statement. And then what are the registration, um, who, who qualifies to register? Before one March, you need to have registered. You can't just decide at any time within the year to say, I am now, I now want to be taxed on turnover tax uh, rates. Okay, what you do, you complete a form which is called a TTO1. It is on the website and that form, you can submit it through um, any of the branches. And also there is an option of sending an email to pcc at sars.gov.za 
If you are a tax practitioner, if you are not, you say contact us at sars.gov.za. You can submit it in, in that manner. So what does turnover tax do? You submit just like a normal provisional tax where you will submit um, a return on at the end of August to estimate to, to give us what was your turnover. And then the second one is at the end of February, and then um, you submit uh, an annual return, which will have will, will be the reconciliation of, of, of the two at the end of your financial year. So for turnover tax, uh, unfortunately, the year ends at 28 February. You do not have the options of choosing uh, different year ends. Okay, what are the rates then of turnover tax? From the income of one rand to 335, by the way, the, rate, the rates have not changed in the past 10 years for turnover tax. So from the rate of one rand to 335, your turnover, you are taxed at zero. So it's nothing. You have complied, you are getting your tax clearance, but your tax rate is zero from one rand to 335. And then from 335 to 500,000, only 1% of the turnover will be taxed, uh, you'll be taxed at the, at the 1%. And then from 501 to 750, it's 1650 plus 2%. And then um, from 750 to 1 million, because I did say the, the, the cut off for 10 over is 1 million. Then it's 6650 plus 3%. That is uh, how turnover works. And then additionally, um, that, that was turnover. I will take the questions at, 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 in, in turnover. And the, the disadvantage currently of turnover is that it is manual. We are working at the process of automi automizing it that you can interact with turnover on e-filing, but as in today, you, you have to send forms via email and not just interact with using e-filing. Okay, um, that is the turnover. But then what are the tax returns that are out there in the tax systems and when are we expected to file the returns? The first return that we require as SARS is for companies, which is an IT14. It is submitted once a year at 12 months at the end of your financial year. And then if you are trading as a sole trader, we call the form ITR12, which you have to submit, just like um, the people that um, Yolanda was referring to, the filing season opened on the 1st of July. And for business people, which are provisional taxpayers, they have to file by the end of January, 2023. And then um, for those that qualify for VET, they have to submit the, usually the return is every second month and you will be notified, but to qualify for VET, uh, we would know that you must, for, for voluntary, you must be um, earning between 50,000 to 1 million. Above 1 million, then VET becomes compulsory, but you file the return every second, um, month. And then we have pay as UN. Pay as UN is what you deduct from your employees and also pay as a director. Um, and then that is the amount that you'll be paying over every month. It's due on the 7th of every month. And then uh, we have a provisional tax, just like uh, normal employees like myself, I, my pay as UN get deducted monthly but for business people, it's twice a year. So they have to provide before filing the, the annual return, they need to provide for themselves. And then um, there it's mentioning the turnover tax return, which is a tax ATT03. It is due, um, it opens from 1 July to 31st um, January, like I said, um, every year. And then another responsibility of a business person is to once you have paid monthly the pay as you earn, you need to reconcile it at the end of the year to check the tax that you have deducted against the payments and the IRP fives of the employees. It is called an EMP 501. 
Um, that is it on text. Like uh, Yolanda said, please go digital. That's what we promote and we do have the support. If you go to our YouTube channel, we have done a number of webinars and we posted them there and we hope they do help. We have also a number of videos that um, are, are, are a support to small and medium businesses. Uh, I hope the information was helpful to our audience and thank you. I'm ready for questions now. Thank you very much, uh, Patience. Uh, there are a couple of questions on the Q&A and I will hand over to Bokang to tackle them. Thank you so much. Over to you, Bokang. Thanks, Pralui. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm just going to jump into it as patience because you said you shared so much information. It was diamonds again. I mean, I've been in business for quite some time, but some of the stuff was quite new. And this is what we hope to do as Digitize SA, you know, to bring people such as yourself into the topic uh, and help young people. Bokang, you've muted yourself. I'm sorry, Bokang is, is muted. Hmm. Can you hear me now? Yes, Bokang, I can hear you now. Yes, can hear you now. Uh, unfortunately, I missed the question because you were muted. Yes. You are here for SARS and you are here for labor the same. I, I, I missed the question, Bokang, because uh, I couldn't hear you. You were muted. Can you please repeat okay. the question for me? But you can hear me right now, right? Yes, 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 I can hear you now. Okay, so Teboho was asking, is UIF for SARS and UIF for labor the same? Okay, thank you. Okay, what happens? UIF belongs to uh, Department of Labor. What we do, we administer it. So we collect it so that the person that uh, pays, pays UN, doesn't have to run to Department of Labor and pay pairs you and at a different institution. So whatever we have collected, we hand it over to Department of Labor. So it is the same thing. Okay, it's the same thing. All right. Next question yes. we have is, if you make a payment arrangement with SARS, can you access your tax clearance? Yes, definitely. So if at, at, as a result of anything, like um, let us talk about COVID, something that we didn't plan for. So now the business find themselves into financial situation where they have to make the arrangements. So they make the arrangements with SARS, but they are compliant. What you need to do, if SARS says you need to pay this, mo this money on the seventh um, for three months, you need to stick to the arrangement. If you are going to remember on the eighth, then you are then you have not sticked to the agreement. But yes, you do get your clearance because you are compliant. We treat you as a compliant because you came forward. Like I said earlier, usually um, people are scared of SARS. We do not buy it. Just come forward and talk to as, as human beings. <laughs> No, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah, let them know you don't bite. So the next question is, I'm struggling to find SARS um, about import and export license. I need help. Okay. Um, the taxpayer that requested that um, if they can share their details with me. As I explained at the beginning of the session, I come from um, SMME 
and we include import and export department. So uh, I will be able, if you also give us the platform in future, we will come with the imp import and export. But unfortunately, remember, you, you tell us what type of audience are going to be part of the session. So we did not anticipate and we did not bring the import and export department. But if they send me their email address, I'll make sure somebody calls them and they get the service uh, or even emails them. And um, it, it, it gives us uh, an opportunity that we need to collaborate and bring somebody for import and export, and then um, they explain the processes. That is awesome. And I'm glad that you can help them out. So what we will do is we will take the contacts and we will ensure that there's an exchange uh, yet again of contact details so that at least uh, the, the person gets sorted out. And yet again, guys, this is what Digitize SA and CEDA aims to do, answer and solve your needs. Now, the next question on that, um, I'm struggling to find SARS. Okay, I think this is the same question as last time. Let me just see if there's a new question. Oh, there's no new questions. I believe though we skipped over a lot of questions that were also going to Audrey. So I'm just gonna ask that our questions that were directed at Audrey before we started can also be put on uh, a little bit. Uh, so it says here, uh, good morning, ladies and gents. Uh, hope you're doing well. What would you recommend uh, will be the best accounting software for stationary shop. I currently run my business online as I cannot find a space yet. So what would you recommend be the best accounting software for a stationary shop? And this would be going out to Audrey. Audrey, are you still there? I am still here. I'm still here. You know, I don't necessarily, I can't say this one would work, this one would work. I would say, go test out, look at your budget and go test out the, the ones that are like your QuickBooks, your Sage, your Zero. See what suits you best. As I said, it, all of them do the same thing, literally the same thing. And what they do is they basically simplify your accounting, your records, and that's what they do. So, so for me, I've, I've, I've looked at what works for me and I chose, let's say I chose Sage because for, I could relate to it, but I've got tons of people who prefer the other person. So it, it's not a one size fits all kind of answer. Probably first have to look at what you, what your needs are and you, what your budget is and volumes, but all of them can handle big volumes. So I think, yeah. I hope that answers you. Yeah. I, I think it does provide an answer. So the next question, I'm just going to jump on before we move on, because we still have another uh, speaker that's going to be coming through, um, uh, Bra Frederick from CEDA. But a quick one. I think this lady, Karen, had asked the question before, but this was to you. But now she's asking, says, Patience. Uh, Patience, we are in aluminum. And if you buy material for an X amount and there is tax payable upon the invoice, can you claim it back or not? Yes. Okay. It's okay. Okay. We have somebody that is on here. Um, can we mute the other person that is on? Because his patients can talk. Um, Karen, can you please help me out? Okay, uh, thank you, colleagues. Um, 
or rather, um, okay. The question, what I didn't get is that the SMME is asking in terms of VET or is asking in terms of income tax. This is how it works. So if you are registered for income tax, how do you account for the, the tax? You have the income that you, you have made, and then you less the expenses which are business related. And if you bought aluminum, it is part of your expenses that are for your production and they are allowed. And also, so you will be taxed on the portion of, 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 in, of, of, of um, what is this? On the profit. And also when it comes to VAT, we look at you declaring output. So the output is what you have made as a business. And then you claim the input. So you on the output, you declare the 15%. And then on the input, you also claim the 15% if it is relating to like your production of income and aluminum is part of, of, of your business. And then your invoice must be meeting the, the requirements. So when you bought on, on wherever you, you, you are buying, you must have um, a proper invoice. So you are allowed to claim. Okay, thank you very much, Patience, uh, for, for that answer. Bukan, do we still have more questions? Okay, Brian Louis, okay. Yes. You can hear me now, right? Yes. Okay, I think we have one last, let, let's take another quick question before we move on to the next speaker. Um, so, 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 let's it, it, say, Cedar Rustenbeck, and especially it's for you, Brian Louis. It will be nice for you to also come in here. Cedar Rustenbeck doesn't do business plans anymore, and this person needs one, and would like to know if you know they can even get guidance on how to go about it. Thank you, Wogang, for 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 that question. Uh, as Cedar, we do uh, conduct trainings on how to do business plans. Uh, business model canvas whereby we empower the SMME to be able to do his own business plan. So what uh, I would advise the SMME is that if they go to a CEDA Rustenberg, for example, as they are in, in Rustenberg and ask them that they want to be invited to attend the training on, 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 on business plan and business uh, model canvas, and then they will, so that they will be in a position to, to be able to do those themselves. As a branch, they no longer do it, but we empower the, the, the SMMEs with all the relevant guidance and information in terms of how to compile their own uh, business plan. Thank you. Okay. No, I believe that is quite clear uh, and straightforward, Bra Louis. And, uh, you know, there's lots of help out there regarding business plans as well. Guys, I will also like to encourage, let's do research. Let's also play around a little bit with the internet. Now, because um, you'll find a lot of information there. Now, we're going to move right ahead. Abra Louis, do you mind just continuing and introducing our next speaker, please? Thank you very much, uh, Evoca. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is Mr. Freddy Lusso, who's also our colleague here at CEDA. We will also share some information uh, regarding financing uh, for SMMEs. Over to you, Freddie. I hope you are ready. Uh, you can put up your presentation if you you're ready. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. This one here on the platform. Yes, I'm Freddie. As I've been introduced, I'm based in Lepopo. I've been advised to actually talk about uh, 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 clients at CEDA. That is, all, in fact, overall finance, how we really interact with clients uh, at CEDA. So in our case, I mean, we look at 
SMMEs, but they are divided into two. From where I'm, from where I'm speaking <laughs> in finance, we, we, we have service providers and clients, but all of them, we should agree that they are SMMEs. So me coming from finance, yeah, I want to share with you how we interact with the, 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 the SMMEs. Firstly, I would like to say that SMMEs, as the, the other guy was, uh, my colleague was saying from Rustenberg, you have to, as a client, you've got to come to CEDA and register. But when you walk into CEDA, you must have registered a company with CIPC so that when they do interventions, we, they know that they are doing intervention on something that has been registered, that is legit. So, you, so you, it's going to be a problem if you come to CEDA and you haven't yet registered the company. But I want to stay, if you allow me, on to the service providers. Because remember, while you are SMMEs, as we, want, as we help you, you are graduating into suppliers and others that we have helped as clients will graduate into service providers of CEDA. As you know that as CEDA, we are using service providers as extensions in our delivery uh, uh, regime. So let me allow me to talk about uh, our interaction with service providers, uh, which, is, which we do under the framework of what we call supply chain policy, our supply chain policy and share with you guys here and everyone here how we do about procurement. Firstly, you need to be registered as a CEDA service provider. So once you are registered at CEDA service provider, then uh, in fact, they will go through, you will go through your rigorous uh, 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 sort of an appraisal so that they look at whether you are fit to be a CEDA service provider to, for a particular a, a discipline like, for instance, business development, where it can be a business development supplier for CEDA, then once you are adopted or you are accepted as CEDA as such, you'll be on what we call CRM. We've got a software called CRM that will, that's where we put all our service provider, meaning all the uh, uh, intervention that we'll be doing for our clients now, will be using service providers that are listed onto our CRM, which is a database of suppliers. But as you know that we are a subject of PFMA being us being an agency of government, uh, our CRM uh, uh, database uh, uh, does not supersede the uh, National Treasury Central Supplier Database. Therefore, should we be, should we not be able to find a, a suitable service provider on our CRM? we can go and obtain any service provider that is registered on CSD and we go through them, the process. We, we, we can actually go and hunt them and find them. So meaning the greatest or the biggest prerequisite is you have to be registered on central supplier database of national treasury to be a supplier of CEDA. So that is what we, 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 we're doing to help uh, those that are not registered. You can walk into any CEDA branch and get help uh, to register on central supplier to the base. So therefore then let's go and let, can I take you quickly through on how now we procure and so that you know as service providers that at CEDA, um, uh, mostly at branches, we play around the space of projects that would amount uh, 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 up to say uh, 200,000. Uh, and that is the 200,000 is a threshold whereby uh, you get approval by all the procurement around that approval are approved by the provincial, by, by, by the provincial manager at the provinces. Anything above that is approved at national office. And uh, like I told you that we are a subject of PFMA, we are using the three code system on all procurements colleagues that are between uh, 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 that are above 2,000 and, and, and up to a million. We are using a three code system with our approval metrics that are in place on our supplier, on our, on our uh, SCM policy. So therefore, uh, uh, in your engagement with CEDA, if a, 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 a project that you are doing for CEDA is above uh, 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 30, is above 2,000, know that 
uh, it will be above 2,000 and up to 30,000. Know that the cheapest will be taken, but if anything is if anything is above 30,000, that is now where now we bring in the BE, your BEE score. So you make sure that uh, you update all your BE score. And remember, I've noticed that most of our suppliers, once they update, when the, once their BEE uh, certificates or the Sun Avidavis expire and they go and renew, they do not go back to the central player database and update. So then, that, then now it, it, it forces us to every now and then obtain the certificate from the SIS provider. So make sure that uh, you are updating your profiles, whether it's on CSD, I had the SARS as well, they were talking about it. And that is one thing that we are lacking as service providers today. We do not update our profiles. We wait until there's a problem, then we do that. I mean, like for instance, uh, you find that we, we, we neglect the SARS uh, uh, status on, on, on the central supplier database. You find that you, yes, you have your, 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 your SARS good standing uh, 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 certificate, but you are not updating your CSD. So that is the advice I can give the service providers. In fact, even the, remember I've told you that even our clients that are here, once we help them, they graduate into service providers. So it's important information to them as well. And again, you must make sure that uh, all the time that you are a BE, B, triple B certificate or even soon David are updated when you interact with CEDA or when you submit your bids to CEDA. So, and um, they are, I can share with you again that yes, there might be, we find our, uh, there, there are times where we find that uh, we, we, we can only obtain a, a quotation from one source. Therefore, we have got what we call the deviation policy at CEDA that can be, that, 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 that is approved at different levels at CEDA in terms of our delegation of authority policy. So this is the case whereby you find that uh, circumstances whereby we cannot find any other service provider, but the service provider is only one in the land or in the instances whereby there is an emergency. In that instance, uh, our policy covers that as, as, as CEDA. So it is very important colleagues that uh, uh, you get your things so right when you deal with CEDA, but to be a service provider, remember, you must go and register at CEDA uh, branches so that you can be taken uh, through the rigorous system evaluating uh, 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 evaluating your, your, your company profile and to see the, whether it is a suitable company to deliver a certain uh, a service. Remember the business development services that we are having, remember the promotional materials that we are having, remember all other uh, uh, services because what you do is we will give you the kind of service that we expect from service providers and you have to choose. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's a minimum of four that you can register for at CEDA, but that is how we do. Again, at CEDA, we are also a participant into, uh, in the RT tenders that are published on the National Treasury website. So you might be maybe in a certain uh, particular uh, supply or goods or, 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 or services, make sure that you register on the, on the uh, not register, but you make sure that you enter or you participate in the bids on the national treasury so that we can be accessed by agencies like CEDA. We also participate in the national treasury uh, 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 transversal tenders as published. Uh, I think that's all what I have for now. I can wait for uh, questions if there are any. Thank you, the presenter. Thank you very much, uh, Freddie. Uh, I think you've given a, 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 a nutshell in terms of what CEDA does and also how to become a, a CEDA client. Uh, I think there are also questions uh, that have been posted on the <coughs> platform. Uh, Bogan, will you please do the honors, my brother, with the questions? Uh, thank you very much, Brother Louis. Um, let's just jump right into it because I think um, uh, Brother Frederick touched on a lot of things and we have more than enough time to actually answer a lot more questions. Um, okay, the first one is from Henry Jordan. 
he asks, how or where can one check the CRM database to see if the CEDA service provider details are up to date? Okay, uh, like I told you, CEDA has got footprints uh, throughout the country, uh, luckily. Uh, in every district in this country, we've got a CEDA uh, office, so you can walk into any branch of CEDA. In fact, uh, 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 even if you are, say, in Eastern Cape, maybe you want to see whether you appear, you have registered here in Limpopo, and you want to just check whether you appear on the CRM, they can check you for you, they will find you that is a holistic uh, 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 database for all CEDA, CEDA wide. So therefore you can walk into that, but you, you can't find it on a, 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 on a website or, or whatever, Google, it is an intra uh, 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 net for CEDA. So therefore you've got to walk into a CEDA establishment and they will check it for you. They will clearly check it for you. All right, no, thank you very much for that. I, I believe that answers the question. So simple, go inside, the system is internal. So it's not external, it's not available for external people. And yes, with all this data theft, we also have to be very important, you know, very careful. But then let's go to the next question. We have a question from Chuli Mukuki. She asks, I'm promoting CEDA trap program. I want to hear from the panelists if we can have or integrate CEDA in our roadshows. All right, so Tuli is asking if CEDA can be integrated into their roadshows. I think presiding officer, I, I didn't see who else is here from CEDA who are coming from operation. They can easily answer that one. Uh, if they can help me, you ask. There was somebody that came from Sida at Rastenberg. I'm sure he can answer that one for us. Thank you. Bye, Louis. I'm going to run to you on this one. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, 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 Bokang. I was hoping that Sharon will take it uh, in terms of uh, working together with service providers and promoting the trip. Uh, uh, program, but it's something that we can discuss internally and advise the SMME in, te uh, in terms of how they can go about uh, 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 working with us uh, in, for 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 promoting the the township rural uh, entrepreneurship program. Nice. So what yeah. we'll do yet again is the lady who asked the question. We will get in touch. We'll exchange contacts yes. uh, and actually just take on this further. Uh, beyond the um, live streaming that we have. Okay, now for the ladies from SARS, all right? There's a question for you ladies is, so please prepare yourself. Um, if I haven't, or I would say, if haven't been able to file uh, a return for a dormant company, okay? So if I haven't been able to file a return for a dormant company. What steps can I take to remedy this? Hopefully there's an yeah, option online. Well, thanks for coming. So if you haven't uh, been compliant, the first step, uh, because NASA is going digital, is to ensure that you Sorry, let me just turn on my video. Okay, so if you are not compliant on, on e-filing, okay, you firstly need to make sure that you are registered to, uh, on, on e-filing and then the public officer has been updated with that firstly. That is done now after COVID through booking an appointment and a consultant at the convenience of, of your home will do a telephonic appointment. If you have uploaded the documentation on the case when you're booking an appointment, and then once the representative has been activated on the SAR side, then you can move in on the e-filing processes where you can remedy the compliance. So that will mean that the registration process because the representative has been activated will be easier for you because 
when you log in and you add the details of the, the company on your e-file and profile, automatically the text types of your company will reflect when you put in your text number and allow you to activate your text number. So once your text number has been activated, the first thing that you do on your profile is to go to your text status profile menu. That's information where you can activate text status is available on the site website. It's actually easy where you go to text uh, compliance status and then on my profile, then you activate your text clearance to see which returns are outstanding. Once you are able to see which returns are outstanding, then you will be able to submit those outstanding returns. The, the guide is also available on the website. Yes, patient, your hand is up. No, I just want to add once we are done on the pr uh, process of how to do it on e-filing. Um, if you okay, allow you me, can, can I also come in? Yes, you can continue. Okay, I, I hope I did not disturb Yolanda. Uh, but the, the additional information is that remember that sometimes as a company, you, you are dormant, but you know that you are not trading. SARS is not away. So to us, it's an active business. So if it is an active business, we expect um, a return. So you are supposed to file a nil return. So you need to follow the process that uh, Yolanda has explained. But additionally, once you have filed the return, you can, because there are administrative penalties for non-filing of returns, you, you can uh, ask for SARS to review the amount that was charged but you, you, you first remedy the non-compliance and then for SARS to review the amount that was the penalty, it needs to be a, a second um, leg because sometimes taxpayers, they go out there and expect and, and, and ask for a review, but you have not remedied the non-compliance. That is how it, 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 it should be done. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies, for that. And um, that was very intense in terms of um, answering that. And I think uh, just from my personal experience with SARS, I'd just like to say it sounds very uh, intimidating when you have to go and do this yourself. Um, but trust me, it is that easy to actually go inside the portal and get your taxes in order. Do not be intimidated by the platform. Um, it is that easy. So moving on to the next question. Uh, what do you do when you are under audit and they request some documents and you submit them, but you have been waiting for more than two months for SARS to reply because they need a refund. Uh, they need to refund some money uh, to us. Do you need me to repeat that, ladies? No, um, you don't have to. Uh, I got it, Bogang. Thank you. Okay, what I will share with the SMM is here. It's an escalation platform. What you need to check. It's not about when. When did we start auditing you? So when we count, we need to count on when did we when did we receive the documents from the taxpayer. So um, if you have like, if we have um, exceeded our time, I will on the chat, I will share the escalation uh, channel, to the, the escalation email. And what happens is obviously, if you are going to escalate something that doesn't require escalation, like, um, we know sometimes it's 15 days, I need the money and I feel like I cannot wait longer and I just decide to escalate. It is going to be declined. So yes, you are going to get the, the SMS to say then how to, to do that. I'll share the email, but as well, can I ask Yolanda maybe to assist um, our audience or because on e-filing as well, there is an option of, of escalation. Thank you. Okay, so on the SARS e, uh, e-filing fund, 
uh, because the audit that assess processes, like you know, they handle mostly by you know our auditors on the system. So you should get correspondence under your returns menu on e-filing. Uh, the first menu on top is staff correspondence. This is where you will be able to see if there's any letter that staff might have or the auditors might have been issued to you to see why your audit is not finalized within the turnaround time of 21 days. So the first thing is to go check under your inbox to see if any other supporting documentation because the first letter that the auditors will issue is what documentation that they require. And then obviously the second letter or that you'll see over the 21 day period will be specific details in terms of what do they need from the supporting documentation that have been uploaded, but they did not find. So the best option would be to re-upload all your supporting documentation again, and then to see if you get communication that your documentation has been received. And then, like you said, within the extent of the 21 day period has passed, then you can use the call center in order to do the escalation for you regarding to the case number that has been issued for you, because the letter will have a case number with a specification in terms of what you can use to do the escalation, either through booking an appointment to see the branch manager, if it's an agent matter, you see that you are losing out money on the business, and then you have to have escalation cases to say within these two periods, these two months uh, or over the 21 days period that has passed, that has elapsed, this is my measures and case numbers that I've been using with the call center to say that an escalation has to happen because the call center does actually assist with those cases if they're over 21 days and they escalate it to the relevant department to ensure that your, your refund is actually paid out. So please use those channels to see that, you know, you've got case numbers on the system that will uh, make up the follow up so that even if you do go to your latest branch, like your closest branch, your, the branch manager will be able to assist and get somebody in the right department to make sure that it doesn't go over the past two months where you've been struggling as a taxpayer. Thank you. Okay. Now that is quite thorough, uh, that, that answer. And because we have so many questions, I'm just gonna jump into it, guys. Um, there's so many and the time is limited. So the next one is we did um we did our business returns, I would imagine. Sorry, I'm just correcting some of the English as I read. We did our business returns in March. We then got a non-compliance report. We then went online to check the problem. Um, the system then said we have an outs we have outstanding results from 1999 to date. Now, the problem is that our business was only registered in 2018. We keep sending a message on the system, but we are not getting any replies. Ladies, a quick one on this one. Okay. Um, here, I will, there will be some assumptions that I will have to make in answering this one. Sometimes we buy shelf companies. So when I buy a shelf company, I say my business registered in 2018, but it's a shelf company. It, 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 it was established in 1999. So in that case, the liability of the business dates back to 1999. So my compliance should have been like back then. So what I need to do will be to submit a nil return for those periods where I wasn't working. It's similar to the previous um, person that spoke about um, dormancy. So it was dormant during that period. So you need to submit the nail returns for, 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 for that, for that um, time. That's, that's, that's usually the case. Nice. So nice. Um, I think to solve it, that. just submit the nail returns on e-filing and um, move forward. That's my suggestion. Thank you. No, thank you very much. Thank you very much, our patients. And, and um, it's quite clear as well what needs to happen there. It's like the previous one, just file zero. Okay, now for CEDA, is the technology transfer fund open now? Uh, Bra-Louis? Yes, 
quick one on the technology transfer okay. fund. Okay, a quick one on the technology transfer fund is that there was a, a, a call for, for, for proposals for funding and it closed on the 1st of uh, July. So it will open again at a, at a later stage, but for now it's open. They are reviewing all the applications that they've, they've received. All right, all right, all right. So I think that is great, uh, Bra Louis. Uh, so that's the techno uh, uh, technology transfer fund. It is closed right now. They're reviewing the, um, the applications, but it will be open again very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, we have only allocated two hours to this session and we would like to keep to that time um, and not go beyond that. So most of these questions that you do have, please send them through to info. at digitize at digitize sa.co.za and what we will do for you is that we will then forward your questions to the relevant panelists and then we will then supply you with the answers or link you with them um, so just remember that info at digitize sa.co.za now i would like to personally thank um, all the panelists for coming through today um, thank you very much for making this dream come true. And what is this dream? This dream is Digitize SA, where entrepreneurs can come together and help each other, especially in this digital revolution uh, that we're experiencing. Now, Digitize SA is an initiative by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. If you are an entrepreneur and you would like to be part of Digitize SA, you would like to come and share information, please get in touch with us. We are looking for enthusiastic entrepreneurs to come and help other entrepreneurs in the game and to also be digital savvy. Our mission is to make sure that in these changing times, South African small businesses don't get left behind by the digital age. Now, we have unemployment and many other challenges in South Africa. We believe that uh, the way to actually solving these issues is by having more businesses that are thriving and that are, you know, creating jobs, if I can put it like that. And with that, we will then have a country that is prosperous, a country that is built by its own people. Now, yet again, I would like to thank you for this time uh, that you've taken out of your day to come through um, and joining us on this. Remember, we are having these sessions on a weekly basis, all right? We, these ones with CEDA, there's gonna be big ones where we are hosting them on a monthly, some will be on a weekly basis, but do not get left behind. Join our movement and register on the website. We will communicate with you, all right, regularly about what is happening in the industry. And also we will share information such as presentations from our speakers and panelists. Bra Louis and the CEDA team. Sharon, I know you are not here to actually speak, but um, I know you're there conducting everything. And I would like to thank you guys in particular and hand over to you guys to close off. Thanks, Bra Louis. Thank you very much, uh, Bokang. Uh, from my side, uh, CEDA, I also just want to thank our you firstly you the participants for taking part is taking time to attend this uh, session i hope that uh, you've gained a lot of information that's going to help you move forward uh, to our panel of speakers thank you so much for the expert knowledge that you've shared uh, uh, also to our partners uh, digitize sa thank you very much for this great partnership i think it's benefiting our our smmes in a great deal as Bogang has said, we will share the emails, sorry, not the emails, but the presentations uh, via email so that you have all the information that was shared today. 
without further ado, thank you very much from my side and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Cheers.